And welcome to another session of Bengals in Depth. I'm Jerry Miller, voice of the Bengals, and with us today, as uh, school has started once more, ISU volleyball coach Sammy Stewart, ready to begin her second year, but gosh dang it, coach, not as quickly as you'd hoped. Yeah, I. If you would have asked me if this would be how my second year started, I would have laughed at you and said you're crazy, but. It is what it is, and we're just chugging along the best we can. We'll all get through this together, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are there things about this besides just the nature of COVID-19 itself? And uh, I mean, over 99% of people that have tested positive will recover, but uh, are, they, are there things outside of the health factors that really annoy you about this situation that we've been in for about the last four or five months? And if so, what are some of them? I, you know, I think the biggest thing is I've missed my team. And uh, this COVID-19 has taken a lot of opportunity away for me to create relationships with them face-to-face -face and be around them and get to know them. Um, I've always thought that as a head coach, you got to have good relationships with your kids and this has hindered it quite a bit. And so I think that's the thing that annoys me the most is it's, it's, uh, delayed it, but there are other ways around that. It's just different than I would have expected. I would assume you've spent a fair amount of time in front of your computer doing what we're doing right now. Yes, I think. Zoom calls when they first came out were awesome, and now we're like, no more Zoom calls. <laughs> I am so sorry to put you through this, but hey, you were you were given to me by the media relations department. So, and it's I'm part of the gig. It's part yeah, of the gig. I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you. I I've, I've watched over the last months um, some of your activities on Facebook. Yeah. Tell us about what you've done uh, since. 2020 arrived on the scene and you really haven't been able to be on campus. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, um, the biggest thing is I've been able to spend time with my family. We own a cattle ranch up in Northern Utah and uh, something I haven't got to do a ton of was be on the ranch daily uh, for a long period of time. And so for me, um, that's kind of what I focused on. I also included just making me better. I think sometimes coaches get wrapped up in not having great balance in their life because of things that are put on them. And so I focused on finding balance and being present daily. That was a big deal. And I, I the last couple months have been great. I feel like I'm in a much better place with my sanity, <laughs> considering the situation that we're in that I would have been had I um, not taken time to find balance and work for just me. So, You know, I grew up on a, a farm, a small ranch about four miles west of where I'm at right now in our new home in, in Sugar City, which is about 80 miles north of, of Pocatello. And as I watched you working cattle and pictures of yourself out on the ranch with other family members, I was jealous. Um, <laughs> I my stepdad, I think, and I'm sure you feel this way about your dad, my stepdad, I think, was one of the last of the great American cowboys. When he was a teenager, he used to go out. Uh, we had a place out in the desert where we would summer our cattle. We had a, a well with uh, a gasoline pump that would pump the water, <laughs> and the cattle would come in from the range every day and, and get their water. And when dad was a teenager, he actually lived out there, which is out in the Hamer, Idaho area, and he would ride rodeos. He would ride horseback from uh, where we ranged our cattle to Hamer and Roberts and Dubois, and he would uh, ride saddle bronc or bareback in those local uh, rodeos. And it was a great experience to be able to grow up with a father who had that kind of a background. And uh, I know your dad passed away last year, and I've got to believe that being able to go back to the ranch um, brought a healing process with it. 
it did. And I don't talk about it a lot because it's still hard, but I did lose my dad at the end of last volleyball season. Um, and that was difficult. And I didn't know how I was gonna get through the next spring from January to May because life is hard sometimes and it comes at you. So for that, that would be probably one of the main reasons that I enjoyed going home and figuring life out was because I had time to go through that healing process that you're talking about. And so many of the activities that I did this summer reminded me of my dad and what a great man he was for our family and what he taught us. And um, as I've been going through it, it made me realize how much my mom was huge in that deal as well. And uh, the backbone that she has for keep on keeping on the way that she's going. And I think like you talked about that healing process is a big deal. And on top of a pandemic, I was going through a healing process of my own and I just appreciate what I was able to do. And I just, I don't know, I think I'm in a much better spot now than I probably wouldn't have been had this not have happened, so. Well, I think you would agree with me. There is uh, something absolutely peaceful and rehabilitative about being on a horseback with cattle or being on a stream fishing for brook trout. Yes, I, those are my two favorite things to do. If no matter what, those, that's what I try to go home and do. Um, the funny thing is, is the horse that I rode was my dad's big team roping horse. He won a lot of money on that horse. And so there was some therapy behind that. And actually two summers ago, uh, fishing was one of the best fishing experience I had with my dad. And so it's funny you bring that up, but those are the two things that are most relatable to help me get through what I went through. And I did both of them a lot. I think one day, um, my dad's open horse, his name is Brownie. We chalked up over 45,000 steps together. He did most of them, but, <laughs> but it was just, like you said, very therapeutic. And I'm just thankful for the legacy my dad left and the ability that I have to kind of follow in his footsteps and be part of it and all that fun stuff. So, Well, let's talk about ISU Volleyball. Of course. You guys were supposed to get together just a week or so ago. What's yeah. going on with you and the team? So our first practice before this happened was supposed to be August 14th. Uh, we went ahead and continued with that date. So we practiced one, two, three, four, five. We've had five practices since then. And um, it was really just enjoyable to be back at the gym and to see their personalities back. And um, last March, when I think it was March 10th or 11th was the last practice we had, I told my assistant that I'm so excited with where we're going. I'm just, the next couple of weeks and months are gonna be big for us. And our team is finally grooving and figuring some stuff out. And then the next day they shut us down and sent us home. And I, I cried a little bit, I'll be honest. But um, for me coming back uh, last Friday and being in the gym with them, I just wanted to embrace being with them. And then um, our, our main focus going forward is finding daily every time to get a little bit better while having fun. Cause for, if we're going to go for three months without playing anybody, <laughs> that's incredibly difficult. So we got to add some stuff into it. And for me, I think uh, going and learning more about Pocatello, I'd like to do a few hikes as a team or barbecues. And so just to uh, break up the monotony of day-to-day -day stuff that we have going on. And one, another thing that we're looking at is, one day a week, they're actually gonna write practice so they can do what they want. And coaches are just gonna coach and be in the gym with them, but um, they get to pick something fun and enjoyable uh, where we can still get better. And so those are some things that we've changed. Now, you've lost a number of players to graduation. And as I look at your roster, it appears you've also lost one to matrimony. <laughs> yes, we did. Life is hard sometimes, you gotta make hard decisions, but uh, Aubrey made the best decision she could for her and we are fully supportive of that. And uh, when you look at the situation we're in, um, she had to make that decision and we don't, we're not mad at her for it or anything and she's just gonna go enjoy life the way that she should. Now Aubrey uh, Steiner 
who's from Montana and whose sister Reagan is still on the team and also got married. Um, Aubrey married Tim Fuller, who was a basketball player at Weber State University, whose yes. father Dave played at Idaho State University. Uh -huh. And I actually called games when Dave played. And uh, when I was in commercial radio, I worked with Tim's mom, Amber, at uh, KLCE Radio here in East Idaho. And uh, I'm really going to give them a bad time about this. <laughs> it's a small world some days, isn't it? It is. You are no stranger to recruiting with your background in coaching. Tell us about the new players that you have on your roster. You've been picked by other coaches in the league to finish 10th out of 11 teams. Uh, some coaches get upset by that. Other coaches relish being picked that low because they like the opportunity to prove to everybody that, you yeah, know, we're not that bad. And um, I don't know what your take on that is, but answer that and then uh, tell us about the new kids you've recruited. Yeah, my personal opinion is I really don't care where they picked us to fall. I think um, we're going to, our goal every day is to get in the gym and be a little bit better than we were yesterday. Um, and so if they pick us 10th, great. If they pick us first, great. We're not going to change the way that we approach learning and growth of the volleyball game and stuff like that. And so uh, I just, I don't care. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but we are very process oriented. And so that's the mentality I want my team to have as well. Let's just find ways to be better today than we were yesterday. Um, as for our newcomers, we have five incoming kids. Uh, two of them are transferring in from a JUCO and three of them are true freshmen. Uh, Sadie Gardner comes from a, comes to us from Edmonds College, uh, Community College in Washington. She's originally from Vernal, Utah. She's a small town kid. Um, we liked her that's, athleticism. We liked that's her. That's not in your neighborhood, isn't it, Coach? Yeah, yeah it is. Yep. We liked her uh, spunk. We liked her personality. Uh, she can play volleyball. She comes in with experience. So that was a big deal for us. Um, and we're just excited to hopefully get a chance to see what she can do and go from there. Um, our other JUCO kid is Sean Garvin. She comes from CSI. Uh, she's originally from a small town in Washington as well. I think it's Cooley Dam is the name of it. Um, but we're excited about her. We needed a setter since a setter we had left. And so to have two setters, we had to find one and Sean kind of fell in our lap, uh, which we're pretty excited about. I like her work ethic. Um, the difference between Sadie and Sean was I got to see Sadie play a little bit and I didn't get to see Sean play any because the recruiting landscape changed drastically. And so uh, I was really happy with what Sean's done in the past couple days in the gym. I think she adds to our group uh, and she has a, I just, like I said, I like both of their work ethic, but one thing Sean has is a great work ethic. Um, our three freshmen are coming uh, by way of a bunch of different cities. Uh, the first one would be Bella Ibsen. She comes to us from Boise. Uh, I've known her for a long time. Um, we were looking for a middle blocker that's long and can go off one foot and Bella kind of uh, checked all those boxes for us. I liked who she was. I liked what value that she brings. She's very family oriented and I think she can just do some good things in our gym. Uh, we got to coach her up quite a bit and get her more comfortable. Our offense for our middles is a little bit slower and she's not used to that. She's used to going fast. And so those are things that we've been working through, but where she was five days ago and where she is now, she's a much better and we're excited about her. Uh, the next one that came is Hunter Thomas. She's out of Southern California. Uh, with her and Celestial, who I'll talk about in a minute, both of them had a, I got an email from some other person saying, hey, you should check these two kids out. And they're separate people. And so we got some film and watched them, started to create a relationship with them. We liked their potential. I think all three of our freshmen are a little bit on the raw side, which I'm totally okay with, because it allows Robbie and I to um, grow them the way we want to grow. And so that's something that uh, we liked. But Hunter is physical, 
Uh, she's fun. We enjoy talking to her. Um, she's bringing a lot of energy to our gym, which I appreciate for a freshman. That's hard. Um, but yeah, I think she's going to do some cool things uh, the longer she's in our program. Um, and our last one is Celestial Miller. She's out of Arizona. Uh, she too came by way of email. So we really didn't get to see either of them play live. We just watched video on both of those two athletes. And uh, we like her athleticism as well. Um, she's quiet, which I think some freshmen are just quiet to begin with. And, uh, but she's learning, it, I think both of them, all three of them actually are drinking from a fire hose, uh, learning quickly. And uh, the thing that I like the most is they're okay competing. And they're not afraid to compete against older kids. They're not afraid to come in and uh, challenge for playing spots or playing positions. I think that's something that I'm really excited about with all three of those athletes, those true freshmen. Now, one of the players you lost from last year's roster, you actually have listed as an assistant coach now. Uh, yes. Haley Keck, grad yeah. assistant. Yep. What value will she bring to the staff and to what you're doing? I think is uh, Robbie and I were looking at upgrades for our specific group. Um, it's really hard to coach with just two coaches. Um, and Haley was interested. I enjoyed coaching Haley. I think she has this great work, work ethic. And when we got talking to her more, she wanted to get into the coaching realm. Um, and I don't want to take that opportunity away from kids. So we worked with Pauline to find a way to create an opportunity for her to get in the gym with us. Um, she brings a lot of experience. She thinks the same way that Robbie and I do as far as coaching. Uh, she's willing to jump in and she's energized and I feel like she's going to add a tremendous amount of depth and knowledge to our liberos and passers, which I'm totally excited about. And it also helps me be more active with everyone in practice instead of just Robbie focusing on one side and me focusing on one side. I think it just adds more depth to what we can actually accomplish. And so I'm pretty excited about her joining forces with us actually. So let's talk about the returning kids on your roster and who you're really building this around. Yeah, I, I think that's a lot easier question to answer had I had a spring. <laughs> yeah, you <no> kidding. <laughs> and uh, I guess I get a spring. It's just not the spring that I wanted. It's the year later type of spring. But I like who we're returning a lot. I think uh, Reagan. We've been experimenting with Reagan a little bit on the left side as well as the right side. So she's a lefty, so it's easier for her to swing on the right side, uh, but she has gotten a ton more comfortable swinging at balls on the left side, which we're really excited about. She has some firepower, uh, so we're excited about her. Um, our two liberos coming back are Rachel and Mahela. They're gonna create a tough competition for each other, uh, which I love. I think they're both gonna embrace it and grow from there. and it just, when they embrace it the way that they are, it's gonna make our gym a lot better uh, going forward. Um, Taylor, of course, is coming back. We're excited about Taylor. I think she blossomed big time uh, into her junior year. Um, she figured some stuff out. She took on some leadership roles as well. Uh, so we're just kind of frothing at the bit to get out there a little bit and see what we can do. It's just pause right now. Um, I like Macy and Kaya also uh, coming back as middles. They both are competing hard and working hard in the gym. Uh, they're both finding value in finding ways for them to get better and add to um, what our team can do. And I appreciate that because I think a lot of kids get frustrated with competing daily and not seeing the results. But both of those guys just come in and compete and work hard. So I'm excited about that. Um, who else do I have coming back? I gotta look at my board real quick. Kennedy and Danny. So Danny has had a rough go. Uh, she hasn't got to play a ton, but she came in and she's been bouncing some balls for us. Uh, Danny is kind of our uh, energy athlete. She's always cheering 
her teammates on. She's always helping her teammates. I, I think sometimes that gets overlooked uh, because there's, uh, they're maybe not the best player or there's just not a ton of value there. But Danny is just embracing uh, bringing her team together. And I so love that about her. Uh, Kennedy, we didn't get to see much of last year because uh, she redshirted. Um, I've liked her for a long time. I've known her before I got to Idaho State. I liked her athleticism. I like her work ethic. And I think it's incredibly difficult for her to come off a redshirt year and realize she doesn't know when she's going to get to compete. Uh, so that's hard for kids, but I think she's just embracing it the way we ask her to by um, chipping away at little things here and there. And she's one athlete that I love because she identifies what she needs to get better at. And then she formulates the plan and then she comes to talks to me like, this is what I want to do. I think we can do it this way. So I think, uh, what's the word I want to use? Some collaborativeness between coach and athlete is a big deal. And we're going to have a lot of time for that. Um, who else do I have? Andrew, my setter. Andrew uh, is just, once again, a small town kid uh, that I love her work ethic. I love her athleticism. Um, she too is just put, put your head down and work like crazy. Um, Robbie has been working with her on some tempo and location, and she's gotten a ton better. We just got to keep chipping away at that stuff uh, going forward. But I just, I really like where my team ended in March. I think there's stuff we got to work on between end of March and now, because we lost a little bit. But like I said earlier, we have time. And that's something that volleyball coaches, I don't think have ever had. Um, a lot of times we get in the gym and we have two weeks to make decisions. And before we play our first match, and it's hard, I think coaches don't get it right a lot of times because you have just this small amount of time to make those decisions. And now we have a couple months to move stuff around and get things in place and try things out that we wouldn't normally try out till after the season. So for that reason, I'm just, I'm, I'm just excited to be in the gym. You know, it's only been a week or so since the Big Sky announced that uh, all all fall sports, uh, with the exception of still waiting on a, a decision about men's and women's basketball, but the other sports would be moved to the spring. What do you know about the scheduling? Will you be able to put together a schedule that includes non-conference opponents? Will it just be a conference schedule? Do you have any idea what's going on? I think those are all great questions. And I think those are all questions that need to be answered sooner rather than later. Um, I think as we go forward, we do have time, but our ability to put things in place a couple months beforehand is gonna be huge in us being able to compete. Uh, that's one of the frustrating things that happened. I, I wish it would have happened later, the NCA and the Big Sky decisions. I wish it would have happened earlier so that we could have had protocols in place, requirements in place, decisions in place to see if we could do it. Uh, and that didn't happen that way, which I, I don't think you can fault anyone for it. It's just, we're in a weird, crazy world right now. But now that we know what we're dealing with partway, let's get plans in place and let's start working towards an end goal. And so that we know what we're doing. That was the most frustrating thing is everything was just so much up in the air. Well, you could have a season, you might not have a season. Well, let's just get rid of your non-conference. Well, you're just going to go to conference only. So there was just such things that happened on short notices that it was hard to kind of um, work towards. But I think now that we have time, we need to make sure that as a coaching staff and as a big sky coaching staff as well, head coaches, let's get stuff in proper order to make sure that we can pull it off. So. How have the players reacted to this delay? Um, I, my, what I've seen is they're happy that there was a decision made. Um, they're frustrated that we're not playing, but they too are just like, let's do everything we can to make sure we play in the spring. Let's put the stuff in, same thing I said earlier, put stuff in order to make sure it does happen. There's always, I think, 
over the next couple months going to be this amount of unknown because it is unknown. But if we're doing things that like setting deadlines and timelines so that we know like we're going to have stuff in place by here so that we can do it by then. I think that helps because um, everybody's creature of habit. They like to know and plan. They don't like to fly by the seat of their pants. It's hard for kids and it's hard for coaches. And so just being better at planning stuff, I think is going to be huge. Sandy, as you build this program and Obviously, a new coach comes in with a first year and really not players that you recruited, and now you have to go through this. Once you finally get your program established, and I don't know how quickly you're going to be able to do it, but I know you're on the right track. Give me a couple of adjectives that you feel will adequately describe the kind of program you want to put on the court at Reed Gym? Um, okay, making me go back to my school days with adjectives there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, when they look at our volleyball team, I want people to say gritty. Um, they're willing to work hard and go for volleyballs and uh, just grit, grind them through some stuff. Um, work ethic that kids work hard, um, community. I want our kids to be part of this community because I know how much it is important for this community for athletes to be involved in it. Um, champions, I think that's a big deal for us, uh, working towards that end goal. Um, but to be honest with you, volleyball is over for these kids in four or five years. So I want them, the mark I want to leave on them is to make sure they're better people than the first day of school, than their freshman year, first day of school. So, so that when they go out into this world that um, people can say, hey, that kid's an Idaho State volleyball player. Hey, that kid played volleyball at Idaho State. Look at her work ethic. Look at her resilience. Look at her uh, grit. Look at all these things that just describe good student athletes. And I, that's my main focus is just to turn these kids around to be better people spit them out better than then they came in sammy we're going to wrap this up by giving you an opportunity to talk to your fans um, those people that show up at bengal volleyball matches all the time those that look at the headlines that look at the box scores if they can't make it that always want to see what you do on the road and uh are crossing their fingers every time you guys suit up and hit the court that it's a Bengal win. As we wrap this up, uh, talk to your fans and uh, just give them your thoughts and about uh, what you're hoping uh, they can do to support the team during this next few months before you're able to get on the court and play again. Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing that's probably the hardest is we don't know what fans are going to look like. You know, uh, you watch the NBA and they have virtual fans, but we don't have that ability to have virtual fans in Reed Gym. So I think going forward, just knowing that people care about volleyball and what we do here and that we're doing stuff the right way is going to be huge support. Um, if you see our team on campus or if you see them out in the community, say hi to them and they should be engaging. I've told them to be engaging with fans, uh, finding ways to uh, have community service. That I think is gonna be a big focus for us going forward is finding ways to get into elementaries if it's at all possible or junior highs and to get our face out there. And uh, just, I, I think fans are the biggest staple uh, for successful programs. And knowing that you're there and hearing you and just having you be part of our lives, even in this weird time, is going to be great. And reaching out to us to see if we can be part of your life and, uh, and, and help you guys be better. Um, like I said, I want my volleyball team to be good stewards and good people when they go into this community. So if there's ways for us to do that, let me know. Like, nothing's off the table unless it's some kind of NCAA rule. But we want to just make sure that um, they're involved because 
our fans are going to miss out on a lot of stuff that they've had for normalcy for hundreds of years. <laughs> you go to athletic events, you watch football, you watch volleyball, you watch basketball. And not only have our lives changed because of this, but a lot of community members' lives will change, uh, especially on the social aspect for them. And so um, if there's ways we can be better or if there's ways we can help, let us know. Um, our main focus at Idaho State Volleyball is to be good to and good for our coaches, teammates, and our community. And we want to be able to do that. Coach Stewart, I forgot to ask you one question early. Do you have your own spurs and chaps? I do. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. ISU Volleyball Coach Sammy Stewart, it has been a pleasure to go in depth with you today. And uh, we're just crossing our fingers for the very best that we'll have the opportunity to watch your Bengals back out on Reed Court at the net, getting those wins and becoming champions as quickly as possible. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jerry. We appreciate it. Okay. Go Bengals. Roar. Go Bengals. Yeah.